the day that just won't end. All right, we have steel hedge trimmers, a trash can of rake, and three overgrown barberry bushes. What we're gonna do here is walk around them, take a good look, real good, make sure you know what you're working with. You wanna get some separation. There's gonna be a lot of clippings. I might need a second trash can. And I'm definitely not gonna to touch them with my hands. No, definitely not gonna do that. Okay, it's time to kick some ass. Time to trim some more barberry bushes. These are actually super tall and big around, so um, it can be kind of intimidating if you looked at it really close. You'd be like, oh my gosh, what look at all the stuff I have to take off of here. But really, you're just kind of shaving it down and um, shaping it up. So I've never had any you know, training on this. No one's ever talked to me about how to trim a bush or anything. I've never looked it up. I just go at it and um, just pick a design that was already there. You can kind of tell sometimes or you know, create your own design and go for it. It's, it's not as hard as you would think. It, the hardest part is holding the trimmer for that long. Like, these are some big bushes here. There's a lot of stuff that needs trimmed. Holding the hedge trimmer the entire time is um, the hardest part. So I definitely was not taking much off at first. My whole idea here was that, hey, this yard is on the way home and I have to do it tomorrow. And it's time to trim these bushes. So why don't I just pull over and kind of trim off all the um, wild stuff right now. That way it saved me some time. So I didn't plan on exactly um, trimming the whole thing and you know shaping it all the way up. I just thought, okay, I'll, I'll just take all the, the wild stuff off, scoop it up, and um, it'll be a lot easier tomorrow. So, it's just a spur of the moment thing. I usually don't um, trim them on separate days, but like I said, I'm driving past it, it's tomorrow. And I had a little bit more free time and a little bit of energy left, so I jumped at it. And being the workaholic or the OCD lawn freak, I just kept going and going. And this is what you get. You get yourself into a big job and you stay on it till it's done. I tend to do that. It's kind of hard. I mean, I do stop and start yards, but it's always because of weather. And... Um, you know, not because I want to walk away from something that's you know, incomplete. That actually kills me. I, I want to finish it, you know, and not, not leave something half undone. And um, this is no, no difference here, you know. Even at the end when I got it all done, I should have just packed it up and took off. But I wanted to clean it all up too, you know. I wanted to just get the whole job done at one time. Okay, so I'm giving it that tucked in look along the bottom and just going around the sides and giving them their, their roundness. And then the top, you know, I do that last. I kind of mix it all up because, like I said, you'll get tired from holding that. This is a bigger project because they're so huge. So you're going up and down like that and your forearms will get tired. Then you switch it up and you go take a little bit off the top. And that makes your shoulders tired because look how it's up there shoulder level. And you're holding this up there, even though it's not super heavy, the trimmer, it does, you know, take its toll on you, especially at the end of a day. And this isn't like just one quick little bush where you go zip, zap, and you're out of there. You know, you're, I'm going around and around these suckers. And so that's the secret, is to mix it up. Do a little bit along the bottom, you're kind of holding it, um, it's kind of hanging down there, and you're just kind of walking around with it. Then this part right here, the edges, it's up and down, and your forearms. If you're holding it like me, your left forearm will get tired first. And then when you go across the tops, like that, you're kind of giving their other muscles a rest, and now your shoulders will get it. So, that's how I did it. I just go around and around, and um, pick my pattern. And I am very, you know, aware of am I keeping the, the circle, the shape, 
when I'm trimming. Like right there, I haven't got the separation yet. Another way you can rest your arms is to grab the rake instead. Do some of that work, clean it up, or like right now, I'm raking the top of some of them so that all the clippings will fall to the ground because you don't want them to turn brown in the bush and make it look ugly. And then at the same time, you're getting all the extra little sprouts to stick up. And those are the things that might have popped up tomorrow. And so you can go ahead and trim them back down now, and the bush will last for a while. Alright, starting to sweat. And my arm was getting a little bit tired here. My left arm. So, it's time to like reassess the situation. This one, I still got a lot to do with. These things are actually really huge. This one's gonna have to um, have more taken off along in here so I can get it more rounded. It's lower in this front part than it is back here. So if I trimmed all these little wacky small pieces off, then it would be lopsided, which I have done before. Whenever I get one that's kind of lopsided, I just make it lopsided. <laughs> but I'm gonna try this time to let it grow up a little bit taller. So I'm just gonna even them all across. Got some clippings. And, okay, round two starts now. So these are your final touches before you rake everything up off the ground. You go ahead and make sure that it is the exact design that you want. All the little sprouts that you raked and caused to pop up, you've trimmed them back down off the top. And everything's gonna look just fine. You're already feeling good because you know, all right, you're in the final stages. There's nothing left but the cleanup. I could leave that cleanup for tomorrow too, but knowing me, I have to finish the job. And that's what I do. I go just go around and around the bushes, getting any wacky little sprout that I see, and then start on the ground. Everything that got trimmed off has to get picked up. You can mulch a lot of this stuff up, but really you should just go ahead and rake up to 90% of it. The birds are chirping. I like that. Now, if you don't have gloves, the best thing to do is use your feet. Alright, let's go this way. <laughs> oh, it's hitting the, the bush. There you go. Anything is possible. All you need is a trash can, a rake, hedge trimmers, and really you don't want shorts because when you're kicking these on your rake, you'll be getting all scratched up. And you just go around it and do that. Cut the grass tomorrow. All right, raked it all up. Got one can of crud. And there are little bits and pieces still around, but I will be cutting this grass tomorrow, so that stuff will go bye-bye. And it worked out just fine. You gotta sweat. Sweat equity. That's what I'm putting into my business. This is an investment. <laughs> investment into, um, I don't know what kind of investment this is really. This is just a job that I like. I actually like it. Birds are still chirping. Look, not a chemtrail in the sky. Today is a good day. I can take a deep breath. Oh, yeah. Mmm, real good. Pick these things, throw them in my truck. Let's look in here, shall we? Trash out of yards. This was actually in the yard when I showed up. It was like a donut box. Somebody's going through the donut drive through. There you go. Typical. That's a 
typical dirty bed of a lawn care freaks truck. <laughs> Trash galore. Ah uh, yes, I'm back on the lawn the next morning. It's actually my second yard of the day. Had a little bit of a slower start, but that's okay because I didn't have to worry about these bushes. They're looking good from a distance. We'll take a good look up close. Yep, nice flat tops. And just a few little clippings on the ground. Yep, no problem. We can mulch those into oblivion. <laughs> Time to get the Ferris 48. And I'm going to go ahead and just walk it right now because I'm going to be backing in and out, getting up under the bushes where I haven't been in quite a little while here. And that's just how it goes. You just kind of cleaned it up for yourself. I don't have to walk past and get all scratched up from those wild barberry thorns. Got rid of a ton of them. And now it's just time to cut the grass. Got my shoot blocker on so when I turn around and come the other way I don't spray that car that's in front of the house. Right there. Yep. And there's nothing to it. Let's go back and forth. You go, oh man, why is he walking with that? He should be using the Velky. Well, you know what? I am going to use the Velky. But at first, I'm going to go ahead and outline it because, like I said, I want to get all up in these bushes. And I really didn't want to be on the Velky yet. So here you go. That's how I do it get myself all lined up so I can make those perfect stripes that you guys love so much on this channel <laughs> and I think this might be my final pass back here and then I do put the Velky down and what's cool is the gate fits this hole fits this mower so I do the whole yard with the 48 and so I'm actually flying through this yard a lot faster than I ever have before so things are getting better that's how it goes in this business. It always gets better. Well, sometimes it gets, you know, kind of funky, but then it gets better again. The finished product, I cut it on three inches. The bushes are all trimmed for now. Next, I'll be doing the ones up by the house. And then everything will be just fine. What? Somebody's riding a bicycle, doing tricks. Here you go, freaks. Another day that will never end. So this gate won't, the 48 can't fit in here, but the 36 did. And I'm going along just fine, and the sucker starts sputtering and missing. That same crap it did last year. So I had to trailer it, because it, it barely made it back to the trailer. It was like, bloop, 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 bloop. Then I broke out the 21. So it goes 36, and then it's 21 all the way. It's a little bit taller, because I, I was not gonna set it down lower and fight my way all the way through this. You gotta do what you gotta do. And now I gotta go home, get myself straightened out, and then figure out my mower for tomorrow. It was scorching hot today. It's still scorching hot. It's getting in the 90s now. This is the time of year that you gotta be careful. Baseball caps don't cut it. I don't care what you look like. Get yourself something funky, a straw hat, whatever. Drink lots of water. Take an extra shirt so you can change and make you feel better. Take an extra pair of underwear. You can go in some gas station someplace and change in there real quick in a stall. It'll make you feel better. You won't get galled or nothing either. Look, there's a train. That's it, freaks. That's what I tell you. That's the first. It hasn't, it's not broke, but I don't know what's going on here. I don't know. This could be bad news. So far, it's just been minor little things. Well, I had to buy another one of these. But, 21 inch. That's called the hard way. There you go, freaks. I thought I'd show you this. So I just cut this yard. Things change. Look at that. 
the city came and dug all that up to fix this drain, I guess. Put a big gouge in here. Things are always changing. As a matter of fact, I might not be doing this yard for the whole season. More on that later. <laughs> oh yeah, so the mower, I was working on it all night. Johnny Moe helped me diagnose some things. Randy McHale helped me take apart a couple things. And um, this is all done over the phone through text messages and stuff. And what we think we have here is a vapor lock of some sort. And so when it gets super hot, and yesterday was humid, hum very humid too, uh, it might have a vapor lock. You got to check your gas caps, people. You got to take them off and um, clean the vents on them. But now, forget all that right now. It, it worked on this yard. But we'll see what happens later on when it heats up. But I had a blowout on my Velky. So I got a flat. One thing after another. I was going along and all of a sudden it was. Sorry, something. Flat tire. I don't know what these people are out here talking about. I want to keep it over there, and I'll stay over here. Don't cross the property line. Freaks, I'm down. All right, look around. You hear that? I'm down in Freak Town. That's right, the place that everybody else is scared to go. I'm scared to go there. I don't cut that, by the way. I cut that one. I'm not going to quit. It's one of the oldest yards. You can't make me quit. I'm not scared. Hey, the grass is green, the money's green. Alright, so here's the deal. I aired it up. But look at that. <laughs> it's busted out the seam. Another one bites the dust. Will it survive till I can get to the shop on Saturday and pick up another one? Well, we'll find out. To be continued. Yeah, I'm definitely down a freak town. Strange things happen around here. But see, I feel comfortable because I've been around here it's like forever. Nobody else will come down here and cut grass. So you can pick and choose the cream of the crop if there is such a thing. Every few years somebody come up and try and start something with you. That's when you reach in here and pull out your dog bone wrench. And you show them how to use it real good. <laughs> Wait, what am I gonna get in here? Wait, what is this? Oh, it's not a dog ball wrench. I can either change your spark plug or conk you in the head. I can hit you with the baseball. Oh, this is that baseball from last year. I found that. Will you be my girlfriend? I'm saving that, so when I see a um, hot looking chick, I'm gonna drive by and just throw it out at her. Conk her in the head with it. <laughs> Almost done. How do you think? Yeah, you think just like I'm thinking. What a bunch of crap, that's what you're thinking. <laughs> Look, I didn't mess with the barrier. But somebody needs to take care of their weeds. Apparently they're not my problem. This is my problem. Now I'm doing pretty good. This time I went that way. Wait, which way did I go? My, my, mine. Yeah, no, that's the way I went. Last time I went this way. See, this is the way I went. I'm delirious, people. Sweating all the time. <laughs> it's getting that time of year.